Hey, all you rad dads out there. Welcome to the Rad Dad Show. Who are you? Who am I indeed? Christian is your name, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just to make sure I've got that. Uh, Fred Penner is my name. I am a uh, performer, an entertainer. I've been for 45 years of my, my life traveling across the country, sharing music, stories, songs with, uh, with a couple of generations. And most importantly, I am a father of four children. One, the first child was a son, uh, is a boy. Uh, my son is turning 40 this coming, this coming year. And I have three, three girls, uh, 36, 30, and uh, 33. So, so a 10-year a span of, uh, of children. Excellent. Would you, are you a granddad? Yes, I am. I'm a granddad five times now. My uh, my son and his wife they had three boys. <clears throat> Excuse me. And my middle daughter has uh, has has two children, a girl and a boy. And uh, yeah, I, and I'm and that's the hardest part of this of this COVID experience is not being able to see them and hugging hugging them person to person. Agree. My my brother, uh, him and his wife had a had a had my nephew at the end of the end of uh, June, and I've I've seen him you know on a limited basis, and uh, definitely tough. That's hard. Uh, do, you, uh, do do you consider yourself a rad dad? I do indeed. I've uh, I've I think the uh, for whatever whatever reason the the kind of gig that I've I've got thing that I'm doing in my life. Is uh, is generally considered pretty cool, you know, getting up on stage. And all of my kids have been on stage with me over the years, you know, performing. They've all recorded with me on my on my CDs uh, right from the beginning in the in the early early part of the '80s. Um, they were singing with me, so I've I've done some pretty pretty cool things with them. We've toured together across the country, so uh, I think they would consider me a rad dad. So. I'll leave it to them to make that decision. There we go. That's that's the litmus test, so to speak. If if they consider it, that's good. Do you uh, consider yourself a rad granddad? And is there a difference between? So it's kind of like a two part question. Is there a difference between how you approach being a a grandpa and how you approach being a father? Um, well, yeah, sure, to some degree. I, I mean, not having the ultimate responsibility for the child is. Uh, is the world of the grandfather or the grandparent? Um, you know, I, I I love being with the kids and and uh, and 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 romping with them and playing playing games and and then saying, oh, look at the time, bye, I'm out of <laughs> good luck putting them to sleep now. You know, so it it's uh, yeah, there's a very different perspective when you have your own children. It's obviously completely different, but I I love. Uh, watching the grand kill, uh, grandchildren growing and and thinking of the things that I I may teach them along the way. My my granddaughter, my uh, my middle daughter's girl, so the only female in this in this group. Um, when I was performing two years ago now at uh, in Winnipeg for our Christmas show at the Burton Cummings Theater, and uh, and and Lily is her name. Is is my granddaughter's name, and she came. Uh, she she saw her mom because the my kids were all on stage with me, and she saw her mom up on stage, and she wanted to go with her. So I've encouraged that with other grandkids along the way. So Lily came up on stage and stood with her with her mom. Danica is her name. While we were performing, and uh, and, and then at one at one point, Lily sort of walked over to me, Grandpa, Grandpa. You know, so so we had this on stage. You know the 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 ultimate ah moment, yeah, yeah. and uh, and that was it was and I've got a picture of that so that <laughs> that warms my heart every time I see that one. But um, I I I love being a grandfather, and it's uh, it's really tough being away from them right now. Yeah, uh, what are some of the most rewarding aspects of being a dad? Seeing your children learn something succeed in something uh i actually just about half an hour ago my my son he's uh, he as i said he's turning 40 in august he's been uh working as an ea 
uh, uh, educational assistant in special with special needs kids for the last or the last 10 years now. And uh, just recently he's been he's been uh, uh, doing some some really interesting free form art. He's done over a hundred pieces now and he's starting to sell sell some of the works and he he called me there's a, there's sort of a boutique store in Winnipeg that is uh, is going to handle uh, some postcards. He, he created these sort of surreal but but really interesting postcards for Winnipeg. And uh, and and they are they they actually bought it wasn't a consignment thing but they actually purchased you know uh, uh, however many of these of these cards to sell in their store because they they felt strongly about them so seeing that happen for for Damien at this point is uh, is just a, a beautiful thing but generally you know watching your kids handle life and handle things that you know perspectives that they're they're, uh, they're, they're feeling, uh, and I, I've got lots, I mean, lots of thoughts are now flowing through my, my brain on, on that, that perspective, but, but generally it's watching them grow, seeing them succeed in what, whatever it is they're, they're doing and, uh, and, and feeling that part of contr having contributed to the, the well-being and the, and the love and life of, uh, of, of your child. Is there any difference on how you know the rewarding aspects of being a grand grandpa, or is it the same sort of thing, just kind of seeing your uh, grandchildren? Or yeah, it's the, that particular aspect. I think is is similar. Uh, you know, watching watching the grandkids starting to uh, make music, for instance. You know, he, hearing them just you know listening to to songs or something and and singing along in key. So it's all right. So, so the kids, the, these grandkids have a musical ability. And that's, you know, as a musician, I'm, I'm excited about that because at some point I'm hoping that, that they may come on stage with their parents and uh, we'll, have, we'll have a whole family reunion, you know, on, on a stage somewhere in the future. Um, yeah, I, I think watching, well, really any child that you know in this world, that, you know, whether it's friends or or family, seeing children succeed at something, seeing them grow and discover and, and just be curious about, about the world and, and build things in their life that are, uh, are long lasting. They, they become patterns that they will be bringing forward into, you know, into their beautiful lives. Do you, do you see patterns in your grandkids that you kind of, you know, ha had with your kids and then them kind of passing down? Like, is it... Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. The, 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 my, my daughter, <clears throat> my eldest daughter, her name is Haley, and she's been a, 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 a professional musician in Los Angeles for the last uh, eight years, songwriting. She's, uh, she's, she's traveled, you know, to Europe and Scandinavia and, and, uh, and across Canada and, and, and has been in LA for the last number of years. She's, she's now, this is a bit of a tangent, but she's now a a published author. She wrote a book uh, a couple of years ago that was published just this past year that is out in the market. So your listeners can check out The People You Follow by Haley Jean Penner. And uh, that, that's a pretty, pretty proud, proud indi indication. But something that Haley did when she was very young, she was uh, at, at a daycare in Winnipeg called the River Avenue Daycare. And, and Haley is, is a strong, confident, confident girl. And there was a, uh, a group of younger girls at this daycare, you know, maybe four years old. At this point, Haley was in her last year there, so maybe five. And, uh, and these three girls had sort of formed their own little clique. And, uh, and there was a, this is a long story here, but there's, there's a kitchen area at this daycare where, where the, the kids would go in and there was a, you know, a, a pretend stove and pots and pans and, and they would just play with kitchen items. And these girls at one, one point, these three clique girls were blocking the entrance for a little boy who wanted to go in and, and play there. They were sort of standing there. No, you can't come in, you can't come in. And Haley saw this and with her sensitivity, her appreciation of 
how that little boy would would feel being shut down by these girls she you know stopped what she was doing she walked over she put her arm around the little boy walked up to the girls and says he's with me and just walked right through them into the kitchen area that kind of uh of 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 sensitivity of 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 a human emotion of a feeling is something that that all my kids have they they are they're gentle uh gentle people they have done things in their own lives that are are similar in in that direction uh my my grandchild august is his name my first grandchild he just turned seven a couple of weeks ago but similar things are happening with with, with him at school there was a there was a boy who uh who was very shy and 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 it was off in a corner by himself during recess and he and, and my son told me that that August made made a point of going over and saying, "Come on, come on, you know, you you can come with me, and and we'll go play." So, seeing kids and grandkids showing love and compassion and understanding and empathy and sympathy for one of their peers is is a pattern that will carry them through life. So, watching that happen was just a very very positive thing for me to hear about certainly and uh, definitely so how does that how did you do that you, you know you kind of already mentioned all your kids are, are compassionate and em- empathetic human beings is it is it just kind of in your nature and just how you kind of dealt with them or were you really cognizant of that like i want my kids to be compassionate and so i'm going to yeah, model that's, it no that, that's a good point i i don't um i mean i i am a a, a pretty pretty gentle man uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm six foot two, a couple of, uh, about 185 pounds now. Uh, so I, I, I take up a lot of, a lot of space. So I've, I've been, uh, I think because of my, my upbringing, the kind of family that I, I grew into, I am, I am a sensitive human being. I had a sister who was born with Down syndrome and she uh, was a huge influence in my, in my life of understanding the special needs of, uh, of, of people and especially of Susie. Uh, so I, I believe that I, I am a, a sensitive person. Uh, I br- brought that to, to the family, to the table. So when, when things were happening with the kids, when, when they'd get into situations, when, uh, whether it was, it was time for, uh, a, a, a real, uh, communication with them about something they did that may not have been the, the best you know direction to go it was okay let's let's sit down and talk about this let's uh let's figure out what this problem is it's not just uh you know being not just sloughing it off but but when something happened they, there would be okay let's focus in what what went on there what are you feeling what are you thinking are you okay and also being empathetic to them, uh, I think helped them understand how being empathetic to other people made sense. So that that just became became a flow of life. I think. Nice. Uh, what ways did fatherhood change you? Um, when I uh, w- when we knew that we were going to have uh, have a child. Uh, it was, oh my goodness, I, I was in my 30s already. Uh, I remember a feeling of what am I going to give to this child? What is it inside of me that I need to, to share with this, with this, this being? Um, you know, because I was a pretty independent person guy you know doing doing my my trip in the uh, in, in 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 my in my 20s in high school you know uh, just I, I was very um very much a solo kind of performer um i think hmm when damien was born i remember the feeling of 
needing to go back to the beginning of, of my feelings of who I am. How do I feel about relationship? How do I feel about religion, about spirituality? Uh, all of, all of the, the real human values that I, that I embrace and try and bring forward in my work. And I thought, how am I going to do this? How am I going to bring anything of positive value to this child? So I, it was like I, I cleared the slate for, for a minute within, within myself and said, okay, how do I feel about spirituality? How do I feel about love? How do I feel about, you know, the whole range of things? And, uh, and by doing that, it, it helped me, I think, uh, just become more cognizant of, of, of the values uh, that will go into creating, uh, creating a spirit. Because the, the per a child's personality is formed, you know, in the first six years of life. So you, you don't have a lot of time to really make a, a good foundation and basis for, for, for where this child is going to go. So it was really, really pay attention. I, I think part of it, too, uh, that worked in my favor was because I was, uh, when Damien was born, I had just begun my, my uh, performing career for, for children and families. The cat came back, had come out a year before. So I was already focusing in on my work with children, with families. So it, it became a, just a very organic process. And all of that stuff, you know, was shared with the kids and they became part of, of that life for me. So it, it was, I was in a very favorable position to, you know, to pass on some pretty valuable lessons to the kids. And they are all really caring, beautiful human beings. And I'm, I'm so honored to have them in my life. Proud dad. Awesome. Did you, uh, so like going back to that beginning of your career really quickly was, was be working with children and being a children, quote unquote, children performer, always something that you wanted to do? Not at all. I, I was given no real support for pursuing a professional career in music. Uh, it was my extracurricular stuff all the way. I, I loved, I was in choirs from grade three all the way through through my, my schooling years, uh, in, in mixed choirs at high school, uh, in operettas, you know, character roles, acting. You know, I would gravitate to anything performing, but, uh, and even though people uh, encouraged me to, to go out and, and try these things, I was never really, uh, nobody ever said, You're, you are good at this, do this as a life career. So I always thought of it as, as extra. And uh, I, I was still, you know, building my skills. I was still playing guitar and singing and learning songs and the rest of that. But it wasn't until the early 70s, my sister, Susie, uh, who was born with Down syndrome, as I said, she passed away at 12 years old. And my father, he died a year later. So I was faced with mortality check and that caused me to become very introspective to try and figure out what it was that I really wanted to do. I'd gone through university. I had a BA in economics, a minor in psychology. I didn't want to be a psychologist or an economist, but what skill did I have in life that I could bring forward now? And the only thing was music. So I started playing lounges and bars and, you know, uh, the university circuit, you know, I, it was, it was just, it was the folk scene, basically, which was the foundation of my, my upbringing, you know, in the 60s. So I was doing that, I was going into all these different venues and sharing songs with, with the bar, the bar people primarily. And it wasn't until, you know, later in the, in the 70s, when, when the, the whole direction changed and, uh, and I, I started pursuing work with, uh, with families. Um, what do you think, uh, what are some traits you think make one a rad dad? Um, you know, outside of what you discussed, you know, obviously, you know, imparting some, some morality there, you know, that compassion and, and empathy and whatnot. what are some other things that 
Why would your kids say you are a rad dad? Why am I a rad dad? Um, well, I, I don't know what they would say. What I hope they might say <laughs> is, is that I, um, listened to them that i was certainly a, a loving uh father that i was a good provider in in life they, they probably wouldn't say that because that's that's sort of uh you know what, what my wife and i considered ourselves to be good providers for the kids um i think they would uh again it, it all goes because my whole life was on the road basically um they they would see that that's that's pretty cool that their dad is Fred Penner that is um sorry my I, I'm having I'm having some computer problems so I all of a sudden all these bells start ringing because I've I've sent out some feelers to, uh, to I'm going to turn that off though pardon me um I I I just hope that they would see the rad factor of dad is that he, he was a pretty, pretty neat guy. You know, we, we had some fun together. We had some serious times together. We had a lot of tears together. We, we did a lot of family trips together, you know, to Europe a number of times. My, my ex-wife, I've now remarried in my time, but my ex-wife was uh, from Italian background. So we went to Italy a number of times and, uh, and they, they would see that's pretty cool that they could do that with their, with their mom and their dad. Um, what what makes a rad a rad dad? It's uh, it's relationship, obviously, and being as uh, as open and and loving as I could possibly be. And I hope they, I know that they've taken that in. How did you deal with being on the road uh, away from them? Like, were you away from them, or did you? Oh yeah, with you? yeah. Oh yeah, there there were there was lots of <clears throat> lots of touring. I mean the the eighties. <clears throat> excuse me was a, a very intense uh intense decade um my life was uh was on the road i uh i started touring in the uh right after the cat came back album came out that opened up uh, like festivals and events across the country from coast to coast so i was i know i'd be out for for usually about about a 10 day 10 day stretch that's so that'd be two weekends and and some stuff in between and then come back home for for a week and then go out for another you know 10 days or so sometimes it would go a little bit longer once fred penner's place came into the you know into my world then i would be doing uh three weeks uh stretches in in vancouver because the series was aired or produced both in vancouver and winnipeg so I'd be away for three weeks to do that. And then I would do some more touring. So I was away, uh, away a lot. And fortunately, my, my wife, she had her, her own career that was going. And, and we, we were able to afford uh, nannies. And, uh, and, and my wife is very, was very good at structuring things. So the kids always had something to do. They, it was always busy in the house so so they you know dad dad's here oh dad's gone oh, oh dad's here oh dad's gone you know <laughs> so it it, uh, it was it's just what it was in in our uh in our world that there was no they have no basis of comparison so that's that's just what it was but but they uh but they still love me so that's good there we go it's uh you know ask that question uh, we've had a lot of musicians on this show and and, and they always kind of speak to the idea that the technology is there so they could FaceTime their, their, their yeah. kids and that sort of thing. And then they, they would kind of structure their tours around, okay, we're only going to go out two, two weeks at a time. Was that your case? Kind of like, okay, I'm going to go three weeks here and then go home for a bit and be really involved and then go out again? Or is it, was it just maybe that's more kind of what we see now as opposed to back then? It might, it might have been a bit different. When I, when I started up, there, there, there wasn't the technology to go back to so uh so so when i was away i was away you know i i'd say a lot of them on the phone but but something about a, you know face to face contact is just a little bit different i i think that 
the experience of being, uh, wow, how am I putting this? Uh, I, I didn't necessarily no there, there there was structuring of course of the of the touring you know the the uh, a lot of the structuring came around the birth of the kids you know and I was I was at home for every birth I missed a couple of birthdays along the way um, the 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 harder part I think for a musician is even when you're home your your brain is still thinking oh what what's the next gig what do I have to prep for the next one you know, uh, the, the, all, all of the details of being a touring musician, you know, the, the hotels, the cars, the, the band, the instruments, you know, every, it gets pretty complicated. And, and I know that when I was away from home, uh, there would be a vacuum, you know, dad's not here. So life would form its own little bubble. And then I would come off the road and completely disrupt that pattern. You know, because I, I've got my own wants and needs and, and ways of doing things. So, so that, then it would, it would be disruptive for, for a bit of time. I, I would get into the flow. I, you know, I take out the garbage. I clean up the dog poop. I would do whatever, whatever needed to be done. And then it would, it would be, okay, I'm gone again. And it, uh, it, was, it was hard. You know, a, a touring musician with family is definitely not an easy gig and I would I would not encourage it you know un unless that's really where your talent has to go and and that's what happens sometimes I I had no I don't think I had any choice at that point you know in the beginning I I just felt so compelled to explore you know a performing life and uh fortunately I I was pretty good at it Nice. M. Of course. What do you mean? You are. What? <laughs> yeah. What it was. M. <laughs> uh, so, do you have one tip, maybe, to like a touring dad musician out there? Uh, yeah, really. Stay as focused as you can on on the kids. You know, the 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 road can be a very selfish trip, especially if you're the leader. You know, it, it's it's all about me, me, me. I need this. I need this to make my, you know, my work on stage. I need, you know, and that's, uh, I, I don't consider myself to be uh, egotistical. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty sensitive guy, but uh, that notwithstanding, uh, it's still very much a, a a personal kind of trip when you're on the road. So try to let that go and remember your your true value in life uh if you know so sometimes i think that um and do you, i don't know if your your listeners viewers would recognize the name red skelton red skelton uh, was a comedian uh just a, a very very funny actor comedian in the in the 40s 50s and he uh wrote a book and in the book, he talked about being on stage and he he was he was very, very well loved and, and famous. And he said that after a performance, he goes back on a stage where there were a couple of thousand people just an hour ago. And he stands there in the middle of the stage and he looks out at all the empty seats and he says to himself, an hour ago, I was somebody. Now I'm just a man who's who's going to go for dinner you know maybe going to hop a plane go back to his wife whatever but that understanding for a musician that life on the road is not reality i repeat is not reality your reality lands where your foundation is and if your foundation is family that's where your your being has to settle. You'll you'll get up for the gig. You'll get out there. You'll do what you do to th you know throngs and screams of applause and all of that. Once that's over, you have to go back to yourself. You have to live with yourself. And and if uh, if that means parenthood, if that's part of your world, 
then that's where you've got to go. You have to go back to your core and the things that are of true value to you. So that's that's my advice there. What's your core? My my core is is love and life and children and grandchildren. And uh, now that uh, my 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 wife and I, we've been married for four years now. We've been together for for almost a decade. But we bought a property on Vancouver Island. We have a beautiful half acre of, of green and a small house. And uh, and part of my core is 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 getting out there and enjoying nature, uh, being uh, really more deeply connected spiritually than I have for a while. You know, I'm my my wife is no oh, no sorry. That was my daughter Haley. Uh, so my 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 core now is 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 self is is learning to be a a, a better uh, a better husband, a better partner. Uh, but that all comes from 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 inside, being um, stronger in my ability to empathize with with my partner. Um, letting letting go of some of the things that that are uh, just a little too egotistical. Um, my my core is always trying to nurture a better self. Because when I nurture a better me, then I can be a better person to you. That's the that's that's the plan. That's the plan. That's the path now. Is I'm I'm trying to be I'm trying to be a good a good guy in this world. I think you've achieved that, and still the fact that you're continuing to kind of work on yourself really resonates with me, and I I wholeheartedly agree. And that's kind of also one of the the things we talk about sometimes in this show, but also what we do with Rad Dads is like yeah, we're providing an avenue for dads to kind of take care of them themselves. And it's not a selfish thing. Or no. you know, when, we, when we think of the word selfish, I think there's a negative connotation to it. So I guess you could say it is selfish in the fact that I think it's value to find time for yourself and the better, better person you are, the better dad or father, or, you know, uh, like you said, partner you can be. So I, I wholeheartedly yeah. agree. And it's, it's, it's definitely a journey. Um, yeah, sorry, one just backtracking a little bit to to ad, 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 advice or or you know thoughts to other other dads out there. Uh, life's tough. Life is hard. You know, trying to keep all of the pieces together can be can be so very very challenging. Learning how to uh, again take care of self is so important. Uh, and therapy is is can be and often is a very important part of that I, I have I have I've had a therapist for for 10 years now you know after after my divorce uh, that, that's an encouraged uh, direction to go so I've been uh, I've been talking to a couple of therapists along the way my wife and I go to you know to partners therapy occasionally and it's it's so valuable there's nothing you know it is there's nothing negative at all about about therapy because therapy is all about again taking care of yourself so um don't be afraid of therapy that's that's my other other little tangent here uh, i love that message too it's it's there's such a stigma right uh, people thinking that it's it's a weakness and it's it's still kind of permeates yeah. today and it's, it's sad because I, I too you know I've gone to, to see therapists and stuff to deal with issues in my life and and at first I'm like ah you know I'm not going I'm not going and then it's just like oh man I wish I would have went years and years ago <laughs> exactly <laughs> so hey we, you hear it on the show folks Fred Penner says uh, you know therapy works yeah so that, that'd be fair last two questions here what's what's in the future for you you, you said you know you're still rocking and rolling you know obviously pandemic you know, let's put some some the kibosh and some things but um you know if 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 things could kind of clear up and, and, and it's safe for people to travel are you gonna still gonna gig and well yeah the the tour uh i was in the midst of my 40th anniversary cat came back tour when everything shut down we we had done oh probably a dozen or more dates um 
from Ontario through Winnipeg, through a bit of Saskatchewan into Calgary. And then we ended, uh, we, we had been set up in Edmonton at the Winspear Theater. Winspear. Yeah. I wanted to play there for so many years. It was all set. We had about a thousand people coming and uh, two hours before the Alberta Health Authority shut us, shut everything, shut everything down. And, uh, and so I, uh, I, I, I came back to the island and my wife and I have settled in here since. Um, so it's, um, tr trying to, trying to think where, where it's going to go. Now, there, there was a big rush for a while to do a lot of virtual, virtual stuff. Uh, and, and I did a number of concerts in the first couple of, you know, couple of months of, uh, of COVID and then everything started to slow down. And then occasionally there would be uh, a gig coming up. Some, some of them were, were, were not paying gigs. So, uh, you know, I, I had to balance, balance that. Uh, I, I do have uh, a couple of projects that are, that are in the, in the works some songwriting things with, uh, with a couple of groups, uh, one, one group in Ottawa and another, another group in Vancouver. Um, th there's a couple of TV series that are, that are being uh, developed and, uh, and I may do some guest spot on that. There's a, a children's series out of Toronto called Miss Persona. And I have a recurring role on that, on that series. And in, oh, I guess April or so, uh, I did go to Nanaimo and they, they had rented a small, a small space and they followed all the COVID rules. And I, I did. A number of episodes there and that may continue along the way but so that so there's there's more virtual stuff happening certainly more live stuff will be happening possibly not until you know the this the winter of uh 2022 but but gigs that had already been set up for the 40th anniversary cat shows that we we are that i'm contractually you know uh, set up with and, and ready to to follow so there there will be more touring but uh but also there's a, a couple of more years on this uh on this senior body of mine and uh i'm 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 sort of less inclined to get on the road i'm enjoying <laughs> i'm enjoying this this calm this life this this chill existence right now but i'm, I'm sure it'll get it'll pick up again at some point thanks um dad joke do you have a favorite dad joke <laughs> favorite dad uh, do you want do you want to oh, kind of stick out kind of a silly joke yeah. oh what well, depending on what what age you know i, I mean going the uh yeah actually I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you a joke that it, it's 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 more a real life situation uh and and how and, and it connects with being uh a, a focused father i suppose uh, my middle daughter, who now is the mother of of uh, of Lily, and little Milo, their their son, who I'll be talking to this evening. We we have a Wednesday night phone call, regular regular Wednesday night connection. But uh, but when Danica was in grade three, she came back from elementary school one day, and she and and she walks up to me and she extends the middle finger to me. <laughs> You know, and at this point, I, I already had, you know, there, there, there were there were four kids in in uh, in my world, and and I I seen a lot of stuff at this point, and and them testing out words and and uh, gestures, and so I did not react to her. You know, I think she was expecting me to go, no, Danica, don't do that. That's not no, no, no. But I I sort of stopped and you know cocked my head and said, what's what's that? What are you doing? And she, she was surprised, and she says, "Well, that that's not a, that's a bad word, isn't it?" And I said, "Well, it's not, you know, it's it's not a not a very polite thing to do. I mean, some people might might be offended by it. I mean, I I I I just sort of discounted it completely, you know, just completely watered down whatever she was expecting, and then she she, she went away. She she accepted that." Then she went, went, went away and her brain, her brain did some, some churning and she came back to me and she said, dad, 
Is your middle toe a bad word too? <laughs> so I've I've related that one that one a few times, and it's uh, that's a good one. Last question here. Any 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 last fatherly words of wisdom to to the rad dads out there listening or watching? Um, at some point, you'll cross the line and you'll get angry and you'll get upset, and the, because the kids push your buttons, they 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 see they see what you're doing. They understand. A, a bit of a weakness they, they they start to manipulate because that's how they figure out how this world goes they learn how to how to work with people and how to how to play for that matter but but at some point the, the kids will start doing things with you or with each other that will get you riled up and you will you will get angry and at some point you may raise your voice to the kids and uh, and after you do you'll you'll feel oh You'll, you'll just feel like you, you've crossed the line. At that point, my advice to you is don't be afraid to apologize, to go to the kids and say, I'm, I'm really sorry that I got mad at you. I love you unconditionally. What you did, I did not appreciate, but that doesn't mean I don't love you. So it's, it's the action and the love are, are always, always in balance. I didn't appreciate that. You were, you know, you, you, you disrespected somebody, you, whatever they did that caused you to get angry is one thing, but the love is constant. So learning, learning to, to deal with that and not being afraid to, to get vulnerable and, and apologize when you need to. Thank you, Mr. Penner. Thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate it. It was an honor to have a, have a chat with you and get your perspective on some yeah. of the stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really pleased that you're doing this because it's, uh, it's so, so very important. There's, there's a, a, a video I'm going to mention here. It's called The Mask You Live In. It, it's sort of a play on the word masculine, mask you live in. And it's, and it's a, a really powerful video, do documentary that uh, I think every dad should see because it talks about the, uh, what's the word? The, uh, the idea that, that, that men have to be strong that men what 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 makes a man well a man doesn't cry a man is physically strong a man is you know the the, the misconceived notions of what man is of what a, what a what a grown man actually is and and it's men are are as as sensitive and caring and loving and men can cry i cry all the time and and i i take that as a as a sign of of, of strength, not weakness, but but this but this particular documentary, it uh, it goes into the lives of of many uh, people who grew up in very tough uh, parts of the world and had to develop a tough exterior, which ended up you know working against them totally, but uh, but it's don't, don't be afraid to cry, don't be afraid to be vulnerable, and check out the mask you live in. It's a powerful powerful piece. We'll, we'll make sure to definitely uh, look that up and then link it, you know, to your your interview and also throw well, it that'd up. That'd be great, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, we, we had another uh, guest, uh, Dave Reese, who was a drummer for a couple, uh, you know, Vancouver punk bands, and he actually worked for the CBC and did um, did a documentary that was similar, followed dads around and you know, uh, kind of document their life. And one of the themes in in that is, you know, that they're, you know, to try to break down, you know, they're vulnerable too, and you know, just sharing that. Uh, and it's, it's, it's to, to kind of quash that toxic masculinity kind of kind of idea. I think it's so important too, and that's kind of why we do this show as well. Is one of those. Yeah. Well, that that's yeah. That that is that is the point that I'm that I'm bringing to you. Is is this? I'm sure the people, the dads you talk to, I think many of us will have a very similar kind of perspective. Is is uh, be be sensitive. It's okay to be a sensitive human being. Let it let let that out. 
be, show yourself, show your sensitive side. It's uh, it's positive, not negative. Excellent. We'll end it there. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.